Would you like to try one of these extreme sports? No. Not even parachuting? No. Not even rock climbing? No. How about swimming with sharks? No. Hmm. Base jumping? No. Oh, my God. So what? Just badminton, that's it? Mm -hmm. Sheesh. Right. Good morning, Bella. No, good evening. Good evening. Well, again? Did I get it all mixed up? It's not morning time? Yeah, not morning. Oh, my God. I really got to change my sleeping habits. This is out of control. <laughs> so, how are you today? I'm fine. You're fine, huh? How was school today? Mm. Is it interesting? Did you learn anything new today? Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, what did you learn about today? Uh -huh. I am. Did you learn about the monkeys? No. The chickens? No. Fried chicken? No. Huh. What did you learn about? What did you study today? Mm -hmm. Today was math. What, what were you studying today? Mm -hmm. Math. Science. Oh, um, science. Science. Enemies. Um. No English today? No. Okay. How many how many days a week do you study English at your state school? Not every day. So just two days a week. Ah, uh, with the Vietnamese teacher, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're gonna do our interest for speaking five test. The ways of life. Hmm. So you remember how we'll do this. I'll ask you a set of questions about two different topics. And once you answer the question, then you have to give me a reason or an example to support your answer. You remember from the last tests? Mm, yes. Yeah. And you have your papers? Yes. All right, then. So let's get started. Let's go to topic one. So now we're going to do topic one, free time. Now, I don't want to hear you say, I like to sleep. I like to eat. No eating, no sleeping. That's not what you do on your free time. That's a necessity. That's what you have to do every day to be healthy. <sighs> so what do you do in your free time? I play badminton oh. and black TV. Watch TV, huh? Uh-huh. Why? Why, 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 why? Um, because it's fun. And it's fun? <laughs> Playing badminton is fun and watching TV is fun? Yes. Which one's better for you? Uh, badminton. Why? Why is uh, badminton good for you? Because it's a sport. Yeah, you get some... It's an activity, a sport. That's right. So you can get some exercise, which is very, very important. Not just for muscles, but for our lungs and our heart and our brain and our blood. Very important for everything. What kind of TV shows do you like to watch? Uh, Tom and Jerry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They don't even speak. <laughs> they don't speak English or Vietnamese. They just do yeah? Yes. <laughs> uh, cartoons are good. 
but you should try to watch some English cartoons. That would really help your English too. It's very, it's very important that when you have, when you get a handphone, you should put all the settings in English. And when you have your own laptop, you should put it all in English settings because it'll give you more exposure and it'll help you learn English faster. And you should try to watch some of the cartoons in English too. You get more listening practice. Very important. So we talked about the things you like to do in your free time. So with that, what was the best day of your life? At least one of the best days of your life. Can you think of any of them that were just awesome, awesome days? You'll never forget. Was it the day you joined English with Trevor? No. No. <laughs> My God, I thought I was a life changer. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so what was it? Uh, uh, Tet. Tet. Hmm. Yeah. Let, let me guess. People gave you money. <laughs> yes. So if I give you money, English with Trevor would be the best day of your life? Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. All right, so tell me what else. Why was Tet one of the best days of your life? You got some money. You get the lucky money. What else did you do? And why was it so special? I can... Mm. Eat fried chicken? No. <laughs> no fried chicken? <laughs> Unbelievable. I can... Go. To my father and mother's house. Ah, you can go to your family members' houses. Yeah, where do you guys usually celebrate the Tet? Like, have the big dinner and all that. Is it at your grandmother's or something? Or do you do it in your home? Yes. In your home? Yes. Okay, so the relatives come to visit you, and grandma and grandpa come visit you. Mm, yes. Do you do any? Do you help with any of the cooking? Um, a little. A little bit. Do you like the boiled chicken? Mm, maybe. I like chicken many, many, many ways, but I don't like boiled chicken. <laughs> All right. So you talked about the Tet being one of the best days. You talked about the free time, badminton, and watching Tom and Jerry. Who now, the person, who do you like spending time with the most? Uh, That's Mr. Trevor. <laughs> Mm -hmm. My father, maybe. You like spending time with your father? Yes. So, what do you normally do with your father? Why is it fun spending time with your father? Mm, I play hide and seek with my father. You play hide and seek with your mother? Father. With your father? In the house? Yeah. Really? You guys play hide and seek in the house? <laughs> oh, that's cool. Do you have a big house? Mm, it's uh, not small, not big. Mm, so average, yeah. medium size. How many floors? Three. Three? Three? Three. Okay. Same like us. So what are two of your favorite hiding places? Uh, under the kitchen table. Uh, under the bed. Under where? Under the bed. Under the bed. Ah, with the boogeyman. <laughs> Did you ever hide in the fridge? No. Why not? No one will ever look in the fridge. You can hide it. You're small. I can. Did you yes, hide? It's small. Oh, you have a small fridge. Can you fit in the freezer? 
Yeah. The bathtub. Yeah. Huh. Where else do you hide? You have to hide in different places. So under the bed and in the closet. In the wardrobe. In the wardrobe. <laughs> hide in the clothes. You know what you could do? I saw a really good hiding trick. Is you go to the, the hook on the wall where you hang your jackets. And then you put the jacket on you. And then you hold on to the hook. And you pull your feet up. So people yeah. are looking around and they don't see your feet. And they don't know you're there. But it's hard. You have to hold yourself up. <laughs> that's a good one try that one yeah okay cool hide and seek yeah i haven't played hide and seek in a long time let's go to topic two topic two we're gonna talk about homework you love homework right uh, no no okay so do you, do you enjoy doing any of your homework? Is there any subjects you like more than the other and you like doing the homework? English. Which ones? English. English. Okay. Yeah, well, you're good at English. And English is definitely one of the subjects you enjoy. Which subjects do you not enjoy? What's the hardest one? Mm. History. History, okay. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. If you don't like the stories, it's hard to remember the dates and what happened. Yeah. All right, so this one, I'm going to change the question a little bit. It was, what was the most important part of doing homework? But I'm going to change that, and I'm going to ask you, why is homework so important? Um, because uh, we you um, why is it so important? So you don't remember uh remember your your. But not so much about mem remember, because you, you don't want to do your homework to remember what you need to know for a test or for your class. What's the real reason for making sure you, you know, why it's important to learn deeply, why it's important to, to go through all the exercises in your homework? Why is that so important? What will you get from that? How will it help you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you want to make a big dinner. You know, you don't just take the food out of the fridge and throw it in the pot. You know, you got to, what do you have to do before to make sure everything is ready and you know what you got to do and do things in order? What's that word? What is it? Uh -huh. Preparation to prepare yourself, yeah? So the idea with the homework is that the more you learn about it, the better you're going to do in your courses and the better you're going to do on your, on your tests. And what's going to happen if you get a good education and you, and you get good marks at school? What's going to happen in the future? Uh, be smart. Um, what happens if you educate yourself and you get smart? What good things will come to you in the future? Uh, we will. Good jobs, money. What will you get? We will get a good job. And a lot of money. <laughs> Maybe a lot of money too, depending how, how it, smart you are with it. Yeah, it's going to give you more opportunities. going to give you more doors, more selection. Yeah, you're going to have opportunities to, to do the things that you enjoy doing and make more money at it. So what's the opposite of that? 
What would happen if you didn't do your homework? Mm, they are stupid. <laughs> You'd be stupid. I watched a good video on stupid right now, and that's what they said. They said that stupid is not... Um, it's not about really being ignorant or anything. It, it's more about lack of education because with a lack of education, we don't make smart decisions. And if we don't make smart decisions, then we're making often making stupid decisions. It's kind of like someone's inter interested in, uh, let's just say politics or something, government, and, and you read two or three articles and you watch two or three videos and you get some information, you know more about it. And then you're like, all right, I, I, I know about this and I can talk about it. But what you realize is you just know a little, little, little bit about it and you have a lot more research to do. And then we can often say stupid things because we don't know enough. Yeah. And then, of course, there's stupid actions, right? People, you know, you know, you could consider people playing on their handphone when they're riding a motorcycle. That's pretty stupid because you're putting yourself in a lot of danger and you're putting other people in danger, right? So that's pretty stupid, too. We all do it. We all do stupid things sometimes. But the least amount of stupid things we do the better we're going to be. <laughs> That's for sure. So education is a really important thing. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. If you don't do that, you'd be stupid. But what else? If you're stupid, what's going to happen? You're going to make a lot of money? If you don't have a job. <laughs> you may not have a job. And uh, don't have the money too. Yeah. Money doesn't make you happy. It usually just makes you more of what you already are. But there's no question that if you don't have much money and, and you can't get a good job and, you know, you're, you're going to be a victim, you know, and, and life's going to be very tough, whether it's for education in the future for your kids or whether it's health care or you have to pay rent all the time. You can't buy a house and eat properly. Yeah, no, money is a vehicle. It's very important. All right, we're going to go to part two now. Little Bellarama. No, Bella, Bellarama. This Hanarama and Bella Bada Bing. Okay, so part two reading comprehension. We're going to review the lesson that we're, well, one of the lessons, we had a couple of lessons on, on extreme sports. So we're going to talk about the, uh, the base jumping and the cave diving and the free running. So let's see how much you remember from that and how much you reviewed. Number one, where do people do free running? Uh, do they do free running in a town or a city? Yeah. Why not in the country? Because the country is uh, is was very big. And not very big. <laughs> That's not the reason. Why could you not do free running in the village or in the or in the countryside? Why do you need a town or a building? Because the village or the or the countryside is very small. What's small? Mm. What is the difference between Hanoi, Da Nang, and the village? Village small. What is small? The village is small? I've seen some big villages before. No. Mm. No. What is it they don't have in the village side or the countryside? That you have in Da Nang or you have in in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh. They don't have mm, roof. No roofs. Everybody lives outside in the rain. <laughs> no building. <laughs> yeah, well, they they do. They have buildings and they have roofs. Um, but remember, I I think we watched some videos on free running. Or you guys were supposed to, I think, on YouTube. 
Remember, they jump from buildings to buildings and then they jump down walls in between and they're climbing stairways and they're jumping on poles. So everything has to be kind of close together so they can do all their tricks and their jumps. But if the building is like one building here and then one way over there, you have to be Superman to jump from here to there. It's too far. Yeah. And the buildings are not that big and there's not many of them. So they need all these areas where there's lots of buildings and stairs and, and balconies and different things so that they can do their free running. Yeah. If you watch some of the videos on, on YouTube for free running, there's another one too. There's a word, another word for free runners. And I forget what it is now. I didn't know that. It was one of the students that told me. Um, you'll see what they do and big poles and they're climbing up that and jumping off them. So we know what free runners do. What do base jumpers do? Do they swim um, a lot? Base jumper jump off tall buildings, bridges, 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 bridges yeah. and mountains. Mountains and cliffs, yeah. You can see some of the pictures. There's one where you have the guy jumping really high off a cliff. And you remember the videos in the class where they go oh, way up on a cliff and they crawl out and then they jump off and pull their parachute down into the trees? That was really high. That would be scary. Yeah. So, yeah. Jumping from all kinds of high places. You'd like to try that, yeah? No. 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 Would you jump in the swimming pool? No. No? Sometimes. sometimes. Would you jump into the swimming pool? Sometimes. Ah, oh, well, you jump in the swimming pool. Why won't you jump off a mountain? Because it, the mountain is very tall. <laughs> too tall, too high. Okay, this is dangerous. They're all dangerous. Why is cave diving dangerous? Because, because they can't get out of the cave if they have easily if they have an accident. That's probably one of the most dangerous things is if something does happen underwater in a cave, if an accident happens, it's not easy to get out and it's it's not yeah. It may not be very fast either, so that could cause a problem. So what kind of dangers do you think they might... What kind of accidents do you think they could have? What could go bad? Uh, Cave diving. Um, they can... Rock in the leg or pop in hand or maybe... Um, Broken leg. Broken leg. Broken hand. Broken hand. How are they going to break a hand and break a leg swimming in the water? Uh, the rock. <laughs> um, so a rock breaks off in the cave and falls on the leg and breaks a leg? The rock, the rock is four shells. Mm. Yeah. Well, they, 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 that's not what I was thinking. I don't think that's the most logical act problems they could have. I don't think too many people suffer broken legs and broken arms or hands when they're swimming in the water. Even if a rock broke in the cave underwater, I think the rock would kind of it would go slower than if you were climbing a mountain and a rock fell on you. That would be probably much worse. I could be wrong. Like we, we did. No, it's not. It's not. You guys haven't done it yet. But later in interest, I think it's in the teens. There's a, a topic where we talk about uh, a guy named Ralston. And he was climbing in, in Utah. They made a movie about him. And he was climbing down a canyon and a big boulder rock fell on his arm. Um, and he was trapped, and then he had to cut his arm off to survive. Did we do that lesson in, in, in one of your classes? Do you remember that story? 
I think it's yeah. Aaron, Aaron Ralston. You do remember that? He had to yeah. cut his arm off to save his life? No. Okay, so that, that'll be a future lesson in one of the other levels. I don't remember where it was. My, my point is um, that would be a serious concern when you're rock climbing, rocks falling on you. But with the divers underwater, I don't think that's the number one problem. Getting trapped, you know, getting stuck in the rock or something and not being able to get out, that would be a big problem. But there's some stuff that we read in the lesson of, of more common problems. What could happen when they're under the water and they're swimming? It's not about breaking bones. What else could happen? What other accidents could happen? Mm. What do they need? Like, what's the equipment they use when they go on in the caves underwater? What do they need to use underwater? Mm -hmm. They... Is uh, they wear a strong light on their head. Yeah, it would be really, really dark. Can you imagine going underwater and then into a cave? There'd be no lights. It would just be black, 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 and probably no sunlight. So you wouldn't see nothing. So if your lights broke underwater, ooh, which way is out? Uh-oh. Then maybe you swim into a few rocks and bump your head. <laughs> maybe so, the head is in, in the cave. Yeah, that, that would be very dangerous if they, if they, they're, because they always bring extra lights in case one breaks. But if they all broke, I bet you when two break and they're on their last light, they probably leave because they don't want to take a chance. That would be smart. <laughs> Very dangerous. The other thing that I would suggest is dangerous, and it's not in the reading. We, I, I don't know. Well, we probably talked about it in class, but what do they have to do when they're underwater? Uh. Can you breathe underwater? No. No. So they have to use a scuba tank. Yeah, that's that tank with oxygen in it so that they can breathe. So I would think, oh, my light just went out. Oh, my God. Uh oh, I'm in the dark. Help. Why did that just go out? I charged it. Sheesh. Let's see if that one helps a little bit. Okay, that's not too bad. My other little backup light. Hmm. Um, I would, you know, again, like the, the broken legs or leg in the water. It can happen. Sure. But I would be more worried that when you're going through the caves, maybe you break one of the, one of the, the, the tubes or the cables, right? The tubes that brings your air. Because if you damage the, the, uh, the scuba tank, then you're going to have a breathing problem. And that's not a good idea if you're underwater in a cave and you can't breathe. Uh-oh. <laughs> you you want to get out of there very fast. For sure. Yeah. And the lights, of course, very important because you don't want to get lost. You want to see where you're going. Okay. Okay. We talked lots about the equipment now that cave divers use. What equipment do base jumpers use to do their sport? What equipment do base jumpers use? What do they use for their sport? Base jumpers. That would be the most important thing when you're jumping off a building or jumping off a cliff or a bridge. The parachute would be the number one thing you don't want to forget. For sure. But they're also wearing some other protective equipment. Helmet. Helmet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anything will fall on his head when he's jumping in the sky. But as they say, many people die from doing base jumping. And I'm, I've never done it. I've parachuted, but I've never done base jumping. And I would think one problem from jumping off a building or jumping off a mountain is you're going to be close 
to the side. So what happens? You pull the parachute and then the wind comes and pushes you back into the mountain or back into the building. So I think they probably uh, they probably wear all the pads and everything and the helmets just in case they do hit something on the way down. And also if the parachute maybe gets damaged, maybe that'll help when they hit the bottom and give them extra protection. Yeah, but the parachute is by far the most important piece of equipment they need, for sure. So, like I said, we talked about other extreme sports. So what other extreme sports, extreme sports do you know of? Mm. Which ones can you think of? We talked about many, many. What other ones did we talk about? Eating pizza with your eyes closed? No. Ah, I burnt myself with the cheese. No? Huh. How about chasing chickens? Is that an extreme sport? No. No? Oh, okay. Badminton. That's an extreme sport. No. No. My God, you're like swinging sticks and birdies are flying around everywhere. It'd be really dangerous. No. So what other extreme sports can you think of? We talked about several. Which sports do you think are dangerous? What about the one where you tie a rope to your feet and then jump off a bridge? What's that one? Uh, Remember that one? Starts with a B. Bungee jumping. Yeah, bungee jumping. That could be dangerous. Jumping off bridges with a rope tie. What if the rope breaks? Or what if you what 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 if you bounce back up and you hit the bridge? <laughs> what about a roller coaster? Do you think a roller coaster is an extreme sport? You have a roller coaster now in Halong, yeah? In the, um, what is it? Magic Park, Mystic Park or something? In that new amusement theme center park or something? Have you been there yet? Mystic Mountain with the big wheel? And have you visited there yet? Yes. You have, okay. So did you go on the roller coaster they have? Uh, you go in circles uh, and whoosh, 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 fly around. No. No. Are you scared of that one? Dangerous. It's very fast. It is very fast. But um, now, in past, there have been some accidents where people probably got hurt very bad, maybe died with roller coasters. But usually, roller coasters are pretty safe because they're they're they're. They're really strapped in, and you you got seat belts. So even when you go upside down, it's scary because you're going fast and you're going upside down and you're going high. But it's it's safe. You know, very rare does anybody ever get hurt in a roller roller coaster. They just get very scared. <laughs> you don't remember any of the other extreme sports? You can't think of any. What about mountain climbing? Uh, mm, yeah, that could be an extreme sport, right? When you're climbing in the rocks really high up in the mountains, that's an extreme sport. And there was, uh, well, par I don't consider parachuting an extreme sport, but I guess it probably is because you are jumping out of an airplane. Um, and people have died doing that too. Um, but the ones where they do the tricks... Remember we read about sky surfing? It's kind of like a big snowboard they have on their feet and they kind of surf in the air before they pull their parachute. Yeah. And then there's there's lots of other ones too. There's the when they do the big jumps with the motorcycles. Right? And they do these big ramps and they're in the air and sometimes they do tricks on the bikes and then they get back on the bike and then land the bike. That's pretty dangerous. 
Um, it's the other one I'm thinking. There's a few. There's a few. Extreme skiing. Sometimes people will go down the snow cliffs. It's really, really dangerous because it's really steep. Um, very dangerous. Extreme skiing. Not, a, not like a snow hill where everybody goes on. Yeah, there's quite a few extreme sports, for sure. Would you like to try one of these extreme sports? No. Not even parachuting? No. Not even rock climbing? No. How about swimming with sharks? No. Hmm. Base jumping? No. Oh, my God. So what? Just badminton? That's it? Mm -hmm. Sheesh. Any other sport you'd like to try? Mm. Ice skating? Surfing? Would you like to try anything else mm. in the future? Play tennis? Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bella. Interest five is all over. <laughs> so we're going to go to interest six next week. And you're going to try to defend your vocab championship, right? Yeah. Do you think vocab challenge is an extreme sport? No. <laughs> no, huh? Hmm. All righty then. You did good. You did very good. So I will see you next week then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.